Imagine this, it's around noon and you're going on your business. A car is passing by. Suddenly, two vehicles pull out and block the car's way. Amdu men come out and order the people inside the car to step out. A man and a lady step out. The gunmen go ahead and spray 36 gunshots at the man. And all you can do is lie down. The gunmen then come up to you, grab your phone and smash it before leaving with the woman. Now, you don't need to imagine this because this actually happened. It sounds like a scene from a James Bond movie or a GTA game, but this actually happened in Nairobi, Utawala on 23rd September. Police officers from Kayole police station responded to the scene minutes later. 911, what's your emergency? Although there are many uncertainties around the case, one thing is certain, the gunman really, really wanted that man dead. According to the words of the member of the family who saw the body, the man's head was like a sieve. And this leaves us with a lot of questions. Who was the man? Who was the woman? And why did they want him dead? Who was the man, you ask? The man was identified as Kevin Obinya. He was 24 years of age and together with his brother, they ran a matatu business. According to the family, the two brothers had two matatus. On the other hand, the woman, according to the locals, was his former wife. So why did they want him dead and who wanted him dead? Let's go a few hours before his death. On Friday 3 a.m., it was reported that Alfred Obinia, the older brother to Kevin Obinia, was abducted from his Majimazuri of Mwiki. In a later released CCTV footage, it shows a known gunman dressed in bulletproof vest forcing their way in, into his house. The gunmen are seen torturing Alfred, handcuffing him, asking him to produce an alleged gun in his possession before they leave with him. And Alfred is still missing to date. News reaching Kevin that his brother is missing. Kevin was on a mission to find him. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. It is purported that around 11 a.m. Same Friday, Kevin had planned to visit Kasarani police station, but before he could leave, he met a woman who locals said was his former wife along Gesoro roads. It was then that the two cars pulled up and the occupants opened fire, killing him on the spot. The woman was later released by the assailant 17 kilometers away in Feather Estate in Nairobi Eastlands. The woman was unharmed. However, it should be noted that one officer noted that Kevin had a dark past. Kevin had a criminal record. However, it is important to note that the motive behind his killing is still unknown. With Alfred still missing and Kevin dead, let's get into some theories. The first theory is what many believe. Kevin and Alfred were involved in a deal gone wrong with criminals, so they had them executed. But then the question remains, what deal? 
In the CCTV footage, the six armed men kept asking Alfred to produce the alleged gun in possession, which he kept insisting he does not know its whereabouts. My theory is probably the gun they were asking for has an ongoing case on court, and they feared Alfred would present it to the authorities, which could incriminate them in the court of law. As to why they killed Kevin, maybe they feared he was going to the police station to spill the beans, or maybe, or just maybe, it was an attempt to pursue Alfred to disclose the whereabouts about of the gun in question. Another point that proves this theory is that they shot him 36 times. This shows that they never wanted to take any chance with Kevin surviving. Probably is because Kevin had vital information which, if leaked to the police, could have the gunman jailed for life. But this theory has one key flaw. If it was the criminals who wanted that one gun, why would they leave so much evidence at the crime scene? I mean, they left that six cartilage, two rounds of live ammunition and five bullet heads. So why would they risk all that to get one gun? So this theory does not make sense. With that, let's get into the second theory. There are people who believe these are the workings of the police. Remember, the one officer who noted that Kevin had a dark past? There are some people who believe that the police had arrested the two brothers for criminal activities, but since they had no evidence, the brothers kept bailing out and they would go back to their criminal lives. This probably angered the men in uniforms and they went behind the laws. To support this is the fact that a local chief reported he saw two motor vehicles, a Krimisuzu trooper and a white double cabin stop and fire gunshots at the man. But what is interesting is he never noted the registration number. As a law enforcer, you would think if you saw a shooting, what you try as hard as possible was to take a registration number so that you can track them later. Another thing that supports this theory is the fact that there is a self-proclaimed undercover cop who says he warned Kevin to change his ways. In a later deleted post, he says this. After very many warnings, I even called him personally to tell him to change his ways. However, there are a number of shortcomings with this theory. Number one is, I do not think an undercover cop would go online to say he's an undercover cop. Secondly, if it was the police, why would they leave a CCTV footage showing their trails? Another shortcoming to this theory is that even if the police wanted to take Kevin out, two or three headshots would have made sense, but 36 gunshots. This shows that the manner of killing was just not a mere assassination, it was more to do with revenge. This theory is a bit far-fetched. There are people who believe the former wife, let's name her Anne for now, was responsible. Let's see why. The biggest question is how did the gunman know Kevin was at Utawala to pick his former wife? This has led many to believe that Anne gave them a hint. Also the fact that they kidnapped her just to release her a mere kilometers ahead unharmed raises some eyebrows. Like why did they kidnap her in the first place? This theory falls to explain one thing her motive. I mean one could cite jealousy against former lovers, but if it's jealousy, why go and have Alfred, their brother, to Kevin abducted? The only way this theory could make sense is if Anne was an accomplice. This last theory is that the men who shot Kevin and the men who abducted Alfred are two different set of people and it is just a sheer coincidence it happened almost at the same time. Let me know which theory do you believe or is there a theory that I left out? However for now, the case remains unsolved.